We have Dr. Wes Char from Turner Broadcasting System, where they develop and implemented innovative integrated forecasting and optimization models that forecast audiences in the 24 by 7 programming schedule. Dr. Char. Thank you. First and most important, we would like first to take a moment and salute Houston in uh, their recovery, in their uh, strength uh, dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane uh, Harvey. And that's actually most important in our mind. Second, we would like to thank the Wagner Committee for the opportunity to be nominated actually as a finalist for the Wagner Award. My name is Wes Char. I'm the Senior Vice President of Analytics, Data, and Decision Sciences at Turner, along with Antonio Carbajal and Peter Williams, who had the optimization inventory management and ad product science teams. Uh, we would like to talk to you today about truly groundbreaking work in ta audience targeting on television. Uh, this groundbreaking work in audience television have revolutionized, revolutionized the planning and execution of media deals. It has pioneered television audience targeting for the first time. It has disrupted decades old paradigms of only marketing using demographics and have enabled Turner so far to execute on more than 100 uh, media audience targeting deals. Furthermore, we are on track to sell half of our inventory by 2020 using audience targeting, generating billions of dollars of revenue. We've been on track on that. The, we started with tens of millions of dollars that are going into numbers, and we're growing at an exponential rate. And this innovation has allowed a lift in target delivery for advertiser and a reduced uh, CPM for them too. Before we continue, we would like to share with you a quick video that Turner used at the CES to introduce audience targeting to the industry. And further, powered by new data sets and advanced analytics, basic program selection has been transformed into true media optimization. Simple historical indices just don't cut it. Our solutions are powered by a best-in-class predictive model called Competitive Audience Estimation, or CAE for short. CAE builds true audience estimates for any data set. We've tested CAE with industry-leading data sets like Nielsen, TRA, and even first-party data. CAE builds estimates at the 30-minute level so that we can place units where your target audience will be. It's the most granular audience estimation tool in the market today. We have multiple patents pending to prove it. CAE gives our partners a quantifiable advantage and it powers all of our targeting innovations. In 2014, Targeting Now launched on TBS and TNT, allowing a progressive group of advertisers to begin testing the waters. With Targeting Now, we were able to maintain their day part mix, guarantee demo impressions, and could still negotiate on their demo CPMs. But Targeting Now also optimized their schedules so they could get more of the audience target they care about most. In 2015, we launched Targeting Now 1.0, and all of our beta partners renewed, and many new partners took the leap with us. There are over 75 deals slated to run in 2016, and we have real results to share. Across the 30 campaigns that have been completed, every single one saw lift in target delivery, with an average lift of 27% and a high of 51%. That means that Targeting Now schedules deliver significantly more in-target impressions than standard schedules. And on TBS and TNT, it's fueling real results for our clients. Targeting Now has changed the game, so we are doubling down by adding more automation and by fourth quarter, new beta versions of Targeting Now will be available on three more Turner networks. With these moves, Targeting Now will truly scale. And in 2016, we're pushing things even further with Audience Now, the most aggressive audience targeting initiative in linear TV. With Audience Now, you pick the data, you pick the audience target, and Turner delivers, guaranteed, across all our networks. 
Like targeting now, Audience Now is powered by our CAE model. We can plan against any target audience, negotiate any target CPM, and guarantee the target impressions. We are excited to announce that we have partnered with three blue chip advertisers to launch the beta. Together, we are collaborating to build the future of audience targeting and TV. Turner's Audience Now and Targeting Now are changing the way television is bought and sold. We're moving beyond day parts, demos, and CPMs to make our media work harder for you. We are rewriting the rules to create a more engaging and relevant advertising experience that puts the consumer first. Together, we can take smart risks, be bold, and change everything. Let's start something. Um, to begin, we want to give you some background on the TV advertising sales marketplace. Broadcasting and cable television networks are in the business of selling commercial time in exchange for exposures, or what are referred to as impressions. And traditionally, impressions have always been guarantee guaranteed on the notion of demographics, or demos, which are subsets of the total US population based on age or gender. Examples may be persons 18 to 49, or females 25 to 54. <clears throat> The TV ad sales marketplace operates on what's called a broadcast year, or a cycle that begins in the fourth quarter of the year and extends into the next year's fourth quarter. And it's kicked off in May, where TV broadcast networks have big meetings and they announce their new television programs. It's followed by a big sales blitz, where 60 to 80% of commercial inventory is sold ahead of time or upfront. And then during the rest of this, the broadcast year, there are other markets, the scatter market, which where commercial spots are sold closer to the time of airing, typically at a premium, and also the filler sales market, which, can, which is comprised of more distressed inventory that is sold at, um, at less of a premium. To give you a feel of the components of an advertising deal, we have a simplified example here. A deal has a budget, or the amount the advertiser expects to spend. It has a flight date, which is an industry term for the date range over which their commercial spots were, will air on television. There's a rate card type, which um, determines what a valid audience is. The most commonly used rate card type in the industry right now is called ACM plus three, which stands for average commercial, commercial minute impressions plus three days. There's a primary demographic, which aligns the advertiser with the demographic they're interested in. There's gross impressions, which is the guarantee the broadcaster or cable network provides to the advertiser. And there's the CPM, or the cost per thousand impressions. There's also a notion of a selling title, which on this grid here below denotes a specific program or a group of television programs like Conan O'Brien on TBS Network. And then across this grid, you can see allocations of commercial time by quarter. The life cycle of a media deal consists of three main stages, planning, execution, and posting. During the planning stage, um, an agreement is made with the advertiser and the media company on sort of a high level view of the, of the deal itself. At the execution level, the specific decisioning around spot placements is made. Um, and then in the posting period, the actual audiences that were achieved um, in the campaign are reported. And this information often informs future planning for an advertiser. To give you a feel of what we've developed, we're going to dig into our audience targeting solutions. Traditionally, the source of viewing data has been managed in the United States by a company called Nielsen Media Research. They manage a large household panel, which is representative of all television viewing households in the United States. But today, due to technological advancements, there's a lot of different options for television viewing um, measurement. Data fusion, which we'll dig into more, has become widespread in the industry. Set-top box measurement, electronic devices, um, and signatures from your television are measured and can be used to project uh, US television viewing. There's also this notion of CRM integration, where an, uh, an advertiser has their own database of known consumers, which can be matched against a set-top box data set, for example. Right now, the most popular um, way to measure targeted audiences is, per is done through um, data fusion where we have two representative um, data sources, uh, two survey data sources, as an example, that are representative of, of the US population. And through jointly observed variables, variables um, we can impute purchasing behavior on, for example, a television viewing set. 
What this enables is an advertiser rather not to just focus on an age or a gender when targeting an audience, but their likely purchase behavior. So a purveyor of wine can target people who are likely to purchase wine, or a purveyor of diapers can do the same. But what does this mean for us? Well, with likely purchasing behavior married with viewing behavior, we can start to look at pockets on a day and time basis of where audiences are concentrated. This is a huge benefit for advertisers because they can get the right inventory, but it's also a huge benefit for a media company like Turner because we can differentiate our inventory, aligning it with the advertiser's objective. And in order to do this, we've created two main audience products, Targeting Now and Audience Now. Targeting Now is like the first step for an advertiser of moving out of demographic guarantees into the targeting world. We take existing demographic guaranteed deals, and then we turn on Targeting Now at the execution stage which aligns the specific decisioning around spot placements on a TV schedule to a lift goal so that we deliver them commercial spots that are more likely to have a higher concentration of their audience. And this is measured through a, uh, an industry metric called lift, which essentially is a measure of how highly concentrated versus the typical spot placement an advertiser's execution was. And then if moving even further, we have this notion of audience now, which affects targeting across all stages of a media deal, from the planning stage to the execution. It also allows us in these stages to enable a guarantee of target impressions to the advertiser. It also opens up our entire portfolio of um, networks um, for allocation of commercial time. Now we want to dig a little bit more into the long-term planning stage for audience now. A key stage in the advertising deal process is this planning stage, where a proposal is generated. It's an iterative process. There's a negotiation on the specs of a specific media deal. And what's really critical at this point is that we need to have a notion of how many target impressions are we going to have in the future. We really need a forecasting model. And that really drives the specifications of a proposal. In order to do this, we've developed a forecasting model, a regression model um, shown here, that relies on data which consists of observations of 30-minute increments by date and time on a specific network of historical audience impressions. And what's, what we leverage from the data is this notion of a, a television program schedule, like when you look in your TV guide and you see listings by time of specific programs. Since we have good information about programming schedules in the future, we rely on, these, um, um, on this forward-looking information and estimate a lot of effects in this model Noted, noted here by subset J at the program level. So certain effects that we estimate are estimated at the data level and other effects we leverage this programming information. Here's a list of a lot of the different features that we utilize in our prediction model for audience impressions. Um, things related to the network and the program, also things related to the season and time. As you can imagine, children watch less television in the summer than they do in the winter. We also take into consideration competitive scheduling of programming. Genres, for example, are there more dramas running on the rest of the television networks um, at a specific time of day? The fundamental problem that we address uh, in the, during the proposal creation stage is to determine how many units we're going to allocate to, to the different selling title weeks that we have in our landscape. Uh, so the set of selling titles that we have available is, is truly the entire landscape or, or the entire portfolio of networks across Turner, uh, that's shown here uh, vertically. Uh, horizontally, we show the, the timing dimension, which includes all the weeks that participate in a proposal's uh, flight. And here, uh, we're just showing one quarter that spans 13 weeks typically, but in general, this could be as long as four quarters or six quarters for the case of upfront proposals. So we have this uh, very large grid, and for each one of the sales, uh, we have uh, distinguishing characteristics that we use uh, to exploit them. In particular, we have demographic estimates and target estimates, both of which are computed via uh, the CAE model that uh, Pierre just presented. And we also have this notion of a floor rate, which fundamentally is uh, the lowest price that can be charged for each one of these units at, at a particular uh, selling title week. So the way we address this problem is with a mathematical programming framework in which we can maximize a certain delivery metric. And several options can be accommodated. It can be uh, gross target impressions. It could be reach, which is uh, on duplicated audiences. It could uh, also be uh, composition, which is the ratio of target impressions to demographic impressions. Or it could be response, which is used for those advertisers that can attribute certain customer actions to the, viewing, to the viewership of a spot. For instance, if, uh, if they see a spot and then they call a number or they visit a website. 
Now, our constraints come from uh, different agents, both internal and external. Uh, from an advertiser perspective, we have constraints such as a budget, uh, general guidelines on what the media mix of the proposals should look like, uh, which would be sort of the proportion of impressions that should be coming, say, from uh, prime selling titles versus uh, overnight, uh, things like that. Uh, they also provide uh, exclusions regarding uh, networks and selling titles, which are simply those networks and shows that they might not want to air on for branding purposes or, or for other reasons that are uh, pertinent to the advertiser. Um, on the internal side, uh, we have a strategic planning department, which is uh, the one in charge of managing the inventory globally. And as such, they provide constraints that are governing the use of commercial time when creating the proposals. So they provide us with packaging guidelines, which are fundamentally the uh, proportions in which the units of different selling titles should be put together for a proposal. They also are the ones that provide these floor rates or minimum prices uh, that, that should be uh, the lowest prices to be charged for each one of the units. And they also decide on the inventory that's made available um, to this uh, stage of the process. Uh, on the sales side, uh, it's, uh, they would like to create proposals that are attractive to an advertiser. And as such, uh, they have requirements in terms of producing a reduction on the target uh, CPM, which is the cost per impression. Uh, and in particular, for the target CPM, is the cost per impression for the audience that the advertiser is truly trying to identify. But uh, they also provide with guidelines on how much the demographic CPM can increase. Because even though we're moving away from demographics, uh, advertisers are still um, we still want to use that as a benchmark since that's what traditionally they, ha they have used and that's what they understand. Uh, and finally, they also provide uh, guidelines on how much uh, the rates can increase with respect to the floor prices. So when we translate this into mathematics, we end up with a nonlinear uh, programming problem in which the main decision variables are the number of units that get assigned on the specific selling title weeks across uh, our entire landscape, as well as the rates that should be charged for each one of those units. Now, since we have uh, floor prices, we can actually think of the pricing decision in relative terms as uh, how much will each one of those corresponding floor rates should be increased. So throughout our formulation, there are several nonlinear expressions that make this a nonlinear program. We have absolute values, we have uh, quadratic terms, and we have uh, ratios of uh, variables. And this formulation uh, just captures all those constraints that I uh, mentioned earlier, plus a few additional expressions that we uh, capture to quantify, say, dollar values or impressions at different levels. For instance, to be able to track uh, how much of the money is invested in a particular network or how m many of the impressions are coming from specific selling titles. Uh, but truly, uh, the most important ones uh, are, are, are these three ones that we show here, which are the resulting uh, margin of the proposal, uh, the resulting target uh, uh, cost per thousand impressions and demographic cost per thousand impressions, as well as the media mix. As we mentioned before, this is an iterative process, and truly the iterations come from negotiations across these uh, different uh, components. So for instance, a, uh, an advertiser that has more strict uh, media mix requirements might not uh, get as good as a reduction in terms of their target CPM. So uh, we go back and forth until we, we agree on a proposal that works for everyone. Regarding solution approaches, uh, the first thing that we need to do is to transform this nonlinear program into a mixed integer program. And some of the components, such as absolute values and uh, the ratios of variables, have straightforward linearizations. But uh, the quadratic terms are, are a little harder to, to handle. So what we do there is we impose an additional condition on our, our, on our model that uh, fundamentally establishes that we should uh, increase the rates in the same proportion for all of them. And once we do that, we can actually simplify the problem and linearize those quadratic terms and, and get a, a full MIP. Uh, and the reason we can do that is because that, that is sort of the most common uh, approach in practice. And um, or, or that, that's the, the most common um, way to think about the rates, since, since advertisers tend, tend to think of them as, as a single premium. Uh, we also use different solution methods depending on the delivery metric that we are optimizing. So for gross impressions and response, we simply solve the MIP. Uh, for reach, we actually solve uh, the MIP uh, for s several scenarios. And then for each one of them, we run extensive simulations that can allow us to determine uh, what are the unduplicated audiences that result from them. And finally, for composition, we use uh, solution uh, methods from fractional programming. 
Now we will move on to the execution phase, or also known as spot scheduling uh, phase. And just as we did for the planning stage, here we also have a forecasting component and an optimization component. Now, we will not go into the details of the short-term forecast, but fundamentally the main idea behind there is that we take the CAE estimates and we combine them with additional estimates that are produced by smoothing methods that process additional information that's only made available very close to airing. So uh, the, the result of this ensemble uh, is fed then into a spot scheduling engine that uh, is tasked with uh, deciding the exact placements of all the spots that need to be broadcast. So the fundamental problem in spot scheduling is to determine the sequence of commercials, how they will appear on each one of the commercial breaks that are available. And these commercial breaks are comprised by different types of so-called inventory buckets. And some examples include, for instance, a national inventory bucket, which is uh, the, the inventory buckets that will house the commercials that air nationally across the entire uh, US. We can also have a COB uh, buckets, which, which stand for cable operator break. Um, buckets, and those are the ones that have filler spots that only air if the, if the local uh, cable operator does not insert their own commercials there. So other examples include uh, promo buckets and billboard buckets. We also approach this problem with a mathematical programming framework in which we are trying to balance the goals and objectives of all the different types of spots that need to be scheduled. So not only do we have the, the targeted spots, targeting now and audience now, but we also have traditional demographic spots, COB and filler, and audience deficit units. And they have different goals. So for instance, targeting now, uh, spots are looking to attain the desired targeting lift. Audience now spots are trying to achieve a, a, a targeting audience spacing that will allow them to meet the audience guarantee at the end of the deal. The demographic spots are, are very similar to audience now spots, except they deal with demographic audiences. COV and filler, they have no audience guarantees. So really, the objective there is to simply maximize the dollar value of uh, the spots that get assigned. And finally, audience deficiency units uh, are trying to reduce the impression shortfall of their corresponding deals. So regardless of the type of uh, spot, there's a plethora of constraints that have to be obeyed when it comes to uh, uh, governing what are the, the potential placements of spots. Some of them include, for instance, competition avoidance requirements, uh, which are, for instance, the case that you cannot air commercials uh, from competing advertisers during the same break. Uh, we also have time separation, which means that commercials from the same advertiser have to have at least a minimum uh, time separation, which is typically 30 minutes, could be 60 minutes or, or something else. Uh, we have allowable days of times, we have specific positions, um, and, and we have uh, exclusions from, from specific shows within, within a selling title. So once we move this into math, we end up with a mixed integer program in which the main decision variables are binary variables that determine whether or not a spot is assigned to a particular inventory bucket. Uh, this is for the assignment uh, of commercials to buckets. Now, we have another MIP that actually does the sequencing, but we will not go into the details of that one. Uh, so for this one, for the assignment MIP, uh, we have an objective function that trades off the entire dollar value of all types of spots. And we do it in such a way that we have different weights that can be used to, uh, to allow business users to change the priorities depending on, on, on what, what the business is trying to emphasize more across these different types of spots. The constraints are pretty much what I uh, indicated before, time separation, conflict codes, uh, specific positions, uh, as well as some auxiliary expressions to help us quantify both impressions and dollar value that then gets trade off uh, in the objectic function. The solution approaches. Uh, the resulting MIP is, is quite big, as you can imagine. Uh, however, since the number of spots at, uh, for a particular selling title week gets fixed during the proposal stage, we can actually decompose this problem by selling title week without loss of optimality. Furthermore, we can use two facts to be able to decompose it into these assignment and sequencing phases. And, and those two facts are the following. First of all, the posting of audience impressions uh, doesn't typically go more granular than 30 minutes blocks of time. Uh, second of all, these short uh, time buckets typically fall into a single 30-minute uh, block. And because of that, when, all the commercials that were assigned to a single bucket receive pretty much the same audience impressions. Therefore, uh, the, the audience impressions that they receive are independent of the sequencing within, um, within the bucket. And because of that, we can decompose the problem into this assignment phase and sequencing phase without loss of optimality. Uh, finally, the way we execute this in practice is in a, a decreasing rolling horizon, wherein we first solve uh, an entire problem for, uh, or a problem for an entire week from Monday through Sunday, but we only fix the decisions for Monday. 
Uh, the next day, we will look at uh, the decisions from Tuesday onwards, and, but we only fix the decisions for Tuesday and so on. And this is to accommodate uh, additional uh, spots that are coming in uh, during the week. Uh, the last thing that we do uh, is when we run uh, Saturday and Sunday all together. At this point, we would just like to point out some of the innovations uh, in our methods with respect to the, to the literature. So uh, first of all, uh, it's important to note that our methods uh, ha consider optimization and forecasting in an integrated approach. Uh, but furthermore, our methods uh, bridged some important gaps with respect to, uh, to practical applicability and implementability. In particular, our forecasting methods uh, are able to target both targeted and, uh, and demographic audiences. They can produce both long-term and short-term forecasts. They can produce uh, forecasts at the very uh, granular level that can then be aggregated at other different levels depending on the business case. And, uh, and we can process the entire 24-7 programming schedule, which is something that is quite relevant for something like audience now where really you're looking at the entire landscape. On the optimization side, uh, we have a proposal optimizer that simultaneously allocates units and defines rates. Uh, this pr pricing component is particularly uh, novel. And it also accommodates diverse type of optimization uh, metrics. On the spot scheduling side, uh, we are able to consider audience impressions in the scheduling, something that hadn't been done before. Uh, we handle all constraints that appear in practice that, as you could see before, are, are quite a bit. And we handle diverse types of spots. Uh, these innovations have, uh, have been uh, submitted in different patents that are currently pending, and, uh, and these innovations have also been graciously recognized within the industry, in particular by the Interactive TV Today Council, who named Turner uh, a winner for a, an achievement in advanced advertising, and by the Association of National Advertisers, who named uh, Turner winner of the Genius Awards for Excellence in Marketing Analytics in 2015 and 2016. And this is just... Uh, uh, a testament of, of, of the, the industry recognizing that what we're doing actually makes sense and, and it's applicable uh, for the entire industry. Um, finally, we will go into describing uh, the benefits and the impact that these solutions have had at Turner. And we will start with, with a video uh, by Dana Versano, who is a, a senior vice president of ad innovation and programmatic solutions at Turner. Advanced analytics are a huge part of what we're doing here at Turner. They effectively power all of our audience targeting solutions in the linear space. And it really starts with competitive audience estimates, or CAE. CAE is our proprietary model that enables us to build audience estimates at the 30-minute level, at the exact day. And it's really that level of precision and granularity that enables us to drive massive amounts of effectiveness and efficiency for advertiser partners. We've been extremely pleased with the, with the demand that we've seen around audience targeting in the marketplace today. Our goal, as stated by our president, Donna Speciali, is by 2020 to effectively sell 50% of our inventory against audiences. And again, with the, the fantastic analytics that we've built and the solutions that they power, we're very confident in that goal. So we see this as being really a huge part of our business going forward. And not only here at Turner, we actually see this as a huge part of the industry moving forward. We see the world moving towards audiences. We've seen fantastic results from our audience targeting solutions. The analytics that, that we use within our solutions have been able to drive amazing amounts of efficiency for advertiser partners. On average, we're seeing gains of roughly 20% in terms of incremental impressions delivered against target audiences. That's 20% more of the impressions you care about most. And the great part is we're pairing ROI solutions with our audience targeting capabilities. And when we do that, what we find is that we can effectively drive increases in the KPIs you care about most, many times sales. We're seeing sales lifts of anywhere from 3 to 10% when we effectively use audience targeting. Again, 3 to 10% more product sales driven by effectively targeting the audiences you care about most. So what Dan talked about is how we really created new products, new products that the industry needed rather than using demographics, which we've been used for 40, 50 years, actually half a century, we were finally able to change that on linear TV. Simultaneous efficiencies refer to what he talked about, the increase in lift and the attractive pricing that's also available for advertising agency. And technological disruption, yes, with data fusion, with integrated forecasting and optimization, we're able to do that for the first time on linear TV. We disrupted what I said, 50 years of doing business demographics. For the first time, now we can sell across a yogurt eater, an auto intender, someone interested in a Chase credit card, etc. We disrupted the way business is done. We disrupted all business processes. Everything had to be reinvented. And 
the innovative integrated forecasting and optimization models are first in its class and the only one out there in the, our industry. And we generated value not only for us, Turner, but for our advertising partners too.